For county offices of education, if you do have a Social Security 218 agreement, you will get an invoice. But if you, only, if you have a Medicare only agreement, you will not receive an invoice. Or if you don't have a 218 agreement, you won't receive an invoice. So we've been getting some questions on the employee count. So this is based on classified positions only. Um, we will use your, the response from your annual information request if we have that available to us. If we don't have a response, we'll look to CalPERS payroll records. Um, there's resources on the California Department of Education website. And also the State Controller's Office maintains information on employee counts. So um, ideally, we want to use the number provided by you. But if it's not available to us, we will look to some of these other sources to get an employee count. All right. So just quickly um, to roll through our contact information, you have our email address there. So for any questions regarding um, the fees, you can reach out to us via that email box. Also, if you're um, looking for some information about your 218 agreement, what's covered, what's not covered, um, that's the place to send it. Our phone number's there as well, and we've provided our mailing address. And then we have um, some upcoming webinars. Um, you ask, we answer, so it's just that. We'll be able to take some of your questions and review them on that webinar. Um, we also have a webinar um, coming up on how to complete the annual information request. And you can register for those webinars at that website, www.calpers.ca.gov SSSA. Make sure you have three S's. All right, so I think that's the presentation, but um, do, we, do we have time for questions or do we want to, do we need to move on to the round table or? We have nine minutes, so it's pretty much your call. Do you well, want to do the round table? Okay, Brad's standing up, so we're gonna do the, the yeah, <laughs> we're gonna do the round table. He actually offered to dance a jig when we were running ahead of schedule, so I don't know, maybe we can get him the. Dance. I know three of the Fortnite dances, so. <laughs> uh, this one's on. You can turn your mic on. Um, yeah. Um, I, we can hang on if. Okay. Questions for e any of us? So uh, this is Lori from Santa Clara County Office of Ed. I have a question for Brad because this is so confusing. Is the walk-on coaches or sure. uh, special comp reporting? Mm -hmm. So you have a full-time employee PERS member working in one district and is a walk-on or receives um, payment in another district. Is from our understanding, is special comp is only reported if you have a full-time position with so, that reporting agency? So a coaching stipend is, should never be reported as a special comp. Okay. It doesn't qualify as special comp. The only time you'd ever report a coach is if it was a position that you've deemed eligible for membership and it meets all the comp rules, a consistent pay rate, it's on the pay schedule, you track the time, you have the proper pay rate those type of things. But if it's a special comp, never should be reported. Okay, so any kind of special comp from a separate district that you're not full-time and should not be reported Correct. as Correct, that's like a stipend and it's basically not reportable. Okay, thank you. Good question. We have um, somebody up here who has a question. I don't remember what her name is, but. Um... <laughs> oh. Fina, I didn't recognize you from back here. <laughs> uh, my question, I mean request, uh, is from Jennifer. Mm -hmm. When you said that you are still working on the overtime positions. Yeah, for we have birth, quite a few things we're yeah, working on. I just wanted to make sure when you do that, if you can clarify whenever we receive a request from PERS to reverse the overtime positions. Mm -hmm. Uh, what do we do with the Social Security, mm -hmm. if we can clarify, and PARS as well, right. if they can contribute into PARS. Okay. Okay. No and 
also um, the presentation just we had about the social security and PARS. Um, whenever it's certificated employees, when they elect PERS, isn't it then PERS rule apply regardless? I mean, when it's a certificated employee teacher mm -hmm. who had elected PERS, mm -hmm. and um, whenever the position they are in, the PERS rule will apply means they will pay into Social Security. So, um, so that's where we're working with um, Social Security to confirm whether um, it the 218 agreement should apply. So we should be looking to that first to determine whether or not they should pay into Social Security. And because it's at based on positions, not retirement systems, that's where we're looking to them for some formal guidance so that we can um, we can figure out what changes need to be made with the purse. Okay, election. so first section 218, and if it's no, then mandatory 1991. Right. If that's yes, and we hire a retiree, then they will... Um, so did we just change from the there's election to oh okay <laughs> sorry <laughs> okay I mean I was trying to think of your uh, information about so section 218 applies so the, first the section 218 that. agreement you look at the the agreement first the position the person's working in or right. the job duties to determine what position um, they're working in if it's covered they pay in, or if they're if it's not covered, they don't. Or if there's no Section 218 agreement, then we would look to mandatory law. But I don't want to confuse the Hurster's election with, the, with retired annuitants. Do you think when you send a memo in 30 days, you can enclose a flowchart okay. with a flowchart like... I think so we have, um, I'll, I'll check with, I think we have a flow chart. But you, um, it that might we can need use. to be revised yeah. now under new. Yeah, I'll, um, I think um, Veronica would be able to um, look up. I think we have a flow, or Christina's, okay, yeah. yeah. We do have a flow chart. So yeah, we'll, we'll try and, um, if you have input on, or you wanna, wanna share your thoughts on our communication or what we can provide you, as a resource that would be of assistance. Um, we can work on a flow chart for sure. I think we have something we could probably tailor to this, um, but we're happy to. And there also, if we can clarify when it's PARS is in lieu of, and when it's in addition to mm -hmm. Social Security. Yeah, and I think that's something um, that Paul mentioned earlier where they would want to review those on a on a case by case basis. So um, you have the the email address and our phone number. So feel free to okay. send those over and we can work on them. Thank you. I have an online question uh, okay. from Monica. Uh, the county office receives and pays the invoices on behalf of the district for, and this is related to the social security funding fee invoices. Mm -hmm. um, Will the county office receive these via doc history? And if not, how will the district know that there is an invoice for funding fees? Please elaborate on how these invoices will be made available to the districts. No, I, I don't know that, um, Veronica, do you have, do you know, um, do we have that information yet or is it still being built in the system? Yeah, so I don't think we can answer that question, but we can certainly um, clarify once the, the IT effort is complete on where the invoices will go. But um, I'll make a, a note um, just to make sure we consider um, the access for the districts. How, how would they know if they had an invoice? Uh, Sheila Walker, Tame Accounting Department. That to piggyback on that, we pay by EFT, mm -hmm. so the county office pays that. So, how is, if the district gets the invoices, it still has to come through us, I guess, to pay by EFT. So we wouldn't. Does it have to, Jonathan, or can the districts pay an invoice? Yeah. 
Right, so the, the answer was there's no mandate on EFT, that's what's preferred, so the districts could, um, could remit payment. Okay, and then um, to go back to the, the fees on the number of employees, you said by classified positions. Right. So do you consider a, a sub as a position, or if you have a bus driver and then you have a bus, sub bus driver, is that two, or is the bus driver just one? It would be two, right? The bus driver and the sub bus driver. Ronica is shaking her head yes. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. It's noon. It's noon. Okay. So um, I know, I think we didn't, I don't think we got to everyone's question. So if we didn't, um, I th I'll, I'll try and stick around. I don't know if Brad will. He might run out of here. Um, or uh, feel free to email the SEAC mailbox um, if you have questions that we didn't get to um, this morning. But thank you.